This is Gary G reporting for the Inland Valley News. Here is Spalding and Al. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to Spalding Back Court, our panel discussion today. Today we're going to be talking about the convergence of basketball and culture and how basketball has influenced music, sports, and entertainment. As you can see, we have a very esteemed panel. Today we've got Terrence J as our moderator. We've got Lenny S from Rock Nation. Chris Paul, Houston Rockets. Oh, y'all ain't shit for neither one of us. <laughs> Editor-in-Chief of Slam Magazine. And the one and only Courtney Mays, NBA Board. Wardrobe Style. So I'm going to turn it over to Terrence and we're going to get started. Uh, first of all, how y'all feeling this morning? Um, once again, thank you so much to Spalding for having us, man. You know, I, I, I remember growing up uh, playing basketball, not very good, but as soon as that Spalding ball is in your hand, you, you can smell it, you can feel it, right? Cause you, Chris, you remember the first time somebody passed you a Spalding? Of course he does. Yeah, um, it was probably a little dingy though. A little bit, yeah, it wasn't as nice as the ones are now. You know what I mean? But uh, I remember like it was yesterday. You mean to have a Supreme Spalding? Absolutely not. <laughs> My brother was probably trying to he wasn't much of a passer. He didn't sit. <laughs> Got it. All right. Well, you know, basketball over the years, especially now, has, has it turned into a global phenomenon. When you look back, what was the moment for you when you realized how big the sport of basketball had become and how much it's just transcended, you know, all forms of society? For me, probably uh, Jordan dunk all-star game, taking a flight. Mm -hmm. Like you know, being a kid and watching that with my dad was like, wow, like, I've never probably seen anything that incredible outside of, like, Michael Jackson moonwalking. You know what I'm saying? That was the equivalent to me. Yeah. Yeah, but for me, it was uh, just being around it all the time. Like, my dad was in two leagues, you know what I mean? Like, he played for this professional carpet system team, mm -hmm. and he played, he had a team called the CJ Jocks, and he had another team called the Chris Crushers. Wow. And on one team, he wore number 44 because he loved Iceman. And on the other team, he wore number 6 because he loved Dr. J. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So, like, for me, like, basketball was, like, my outlet. You know what I mean? Just the hoop. Yeah. You know what I mean? I played football and basketball, but, like, MJ was, was everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think about Shaq, too, a lot in the 90s as a kid. The movies, uh, the music, all of it is someone that kind of commercialized it and kind of took it to a different level. Obviously, Jordan was huge, but... You know, Shaq had a big influence on me too, just as far as to see how big it was. You know, you know who else too, not to, to cut you off, but Michael Jordan was like this myth, right? Mm -hmm. He couldn't be Michael Jordan. The person who I think influenced the game for me more than anybody was Alan Oxford. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, I grew up and at my house, like my parents, no earrings, mm -hmm. no tattoos, yeah. no nothing. And I tried to grow my hair out and get braids like they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Actually got my hair braided for a game. Did that on the low. <laughs> my hair braided. My pop showed up in my game and saw that my hair was braided and came down there and was like, "You better not step on that court. Don't break it." <laughs> really? Made you take it out? Made me take it out. Girl, helped me do it in the bathroom. I played with the wavy hair. Showed me the bathroom. You know, take it out. It's wavy. It's actually kind of dope. To me. And then next thing you know, I cut it. Cause I couldn't be AI. That's crazy. What about for you? For me, it's more personal. I think um, when I started getting hired for jobs and they were interested in athletes, not just in their uniform or holding the ball, but they wanted to see what they were wearing off the court. And so you could see that there was an interest in what the guys were doing and their personalities off the court. And so what they had on seemed to transcend beyond the ball. Got it. Uh, and Chris is just really fancy. He gets a foot massage every few minutes. So if you see a guy come in, he's just By the way, in the contract. It's in the sign. Really rich people sign. Uh, now, when you talk about that walk, right? That walk from the bus into the locker room now. 
has has become like the runway. And, and literally, you know, I could go into a store, high fashion store, whatever, even whatever store, see an item on clothing, debate on, and then you can like literally look it up. And somebody from the league, you'll see CP and James Harden, somebody has worn that dope Eve Saint Laurent Gucci jacket, and you get to see what it looks like. Saint Laurent, excuse me. You get to see, you get to see what it looks like. When, how did that happen? When did this start happening? You know, I think, I feel like it started with a group of badass women that kind of introduced the guys to Woo! fashion. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm being real honest, um, I think we're able to introduce them to ways that fashion can be a vehicle for brand development. And so where like maybe in the 90s, 2000s, you're looking at actors or musicians and what they have on now, it's like, okay, I want to look and see what CP has on because I'm going to buy that. And so that helps enhance his business or the business of the people that he's wearing. I think um, it's powerful. Yes.